Hello and welcome to the Jim Baker Family Show. Coming to you from the village of Morningside, USA, snuggled in the beautiful Ozark Mountains. Today, our special guest is an international prophetic revivalist and healing minister and host of the Glory Road TV show, Candace Smithyman. Our co-hosts today are Maricela Woodall and Mondo De La Vega. And now, live from Gray Street at Morningside, USA, here's your host, Ricky Baker. Hello, you're watching Jim Baker's PTL Television Network. We're excited you chose to tune in with us today. I want to say hi to everyone on Facebook Live. We're live on Facebook. Yes. We decided, hey, you know what? Yes. It's time to show people the show when we film it, because typically right. it's about a 10-day turnaround. And listen, what we want you to do is share this program, yeah. share it all of your friends, all of your platforms. You're not going to want to miss today's program. We have a very special guest. That's right. A lot of great updates and a lot of prophetic updates that you're not going to want to miss, but make sure that you share this today and every day, every time we go live. That's yeah. right. Man. You know, the PTL Television Network is growing, and we want to thank you for standing with us. The PTL Television Network is available video on demand, and you can download the free official PTL Network app on your iPhone or Android device. You can also download the free official PTL Network channel for Roku, Apple TV, Amazon, Fire Stick and free TV streaming network, which is one of the newer yes. ones we brought on. That's of course, right. you can always follow us here on Facebook if you're watching. You can follow us on Instagram and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. The whole goal of all of this is simply to tell the world King Jesus is returning yes. soon and Amen. we must make sure that Amen. the body of Christ is prepared. Mondo, the first preparation in which we are concerned with is spiritual preparation. Yes. Because if your Thank heart you, doesn't know Jesus intimately, then one day we'll get to heaven and he'll say, well, I never knew you. Mondo, That's those right. are some of the scariest Lord. words that someone could ever hear. But Mondo, we want to make sure that people know Jesus and that Jesus knows them. You know that word, I still remember being in Scandinavia and receiving that word from God. And I didn't realize back then that God was rebuking me. Here I was Amen. traveling all over the world, preaching and praying over people. And God said, I never knew you. He said, why are you praying for people when you don't have an intimate relationship with me? Wow. Why are you telling people about me when you don't even know me? Mm -hmm. And rebuke me and said, pack your bags, go home, get to know me, because later in your life I'm going to use you, Praise not God. realizing that we will be here in this moment yeah. now. That's right. And I want to tell you something. If you don't know Christ, you better get to know him, because there are things happening and things that are going to begin to shake that the Bible talks about that even the very elect will be deceived. Right. Right. And more than that, people's heart will we'll fail, them. fail them out of fear. And there's right. so much happening and people are, listen, have you ever met or come across someone that is in fear? Oh, yeah. They paralyze themselves over fear. I tell my wife, and you can ask her when you see her. I do not allow fear in my house. Amen. I don't allow fear Amen. around right. me. Uh, listen to this. Yes. God has given us the spirit of truth. That's That's right. God has given yes. us the spirit to know how to discern. Peace, love, and, and if you contemplate mind. the fear factor, the Bible says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Mm -hmm. But don't fall into the trap of being a double-minded person because then the Bible calls it, you become unstable on your ways, yes. That's right. in your ways, everything you do. Yet God needs a people that can be stable for the season yes. and the times that we're in right now. But That's I got to right. make sure you know this. You better know what the calendar of God has to do yes. with everything that we're going through right now because we can miss God. That's right. And if you're looking, I'm wearing a shirt, and it, it says right here, I stand with Israel. I want to let you know our stance, the PTL Television Network, the Jim Baker Family Show. Thank if you're you watching Lord. this, yes. we stand yes. with Israel. Amen. You know, I was looking through the comments on the Facebook page, and somebody had uh, commented. They said, uh, does the Jim Baker Show stand with Israel? I want to let you know, yes, yes. we do stand yes, with Israel. Lord. And yes. I want to let everyone know I stand with Israel. Yes. Mondo, if you don't mind, I want to ask you a question before we get too deep. We have a powerful guest today. You are not going to want to miss this, and she's about to pop up in a few minutes. But Mondo, what does it feel like when you're uh, in another country, you're speaking to 40 to 50,000 people a night, many nights a week, and the Holy Spirit says, pack your bags, I want to get to know you more. What does that feel like? Scary. Scary because you think your identity is in speaking, and your identity is in your gift, and your identity is in, in, in the calling that God has given you, yet our identity is found in the will of God. And the will of God is so important because the will of God will make room for your gifts and prepare you for the calling 
But when you're standing in front of 50,000 people every single night, and then God speaks that word to you, it better scare you. And I think this is the key, Ricky, that a lot of church people have lost their fear of God. That's right. Listen to this. The fear of God is so important yes, because key. if you don't fear God, I'm not talking about the fear that That's the world right. gives you. I'm no. talking about the reverence yes. that when God speaks to you, you humble yourself and say, Amen. Lord, speak to me. Lord, listen, and a lot of you are asking God to speak to you, but a lot of you are scared on what God is going to speak to you because the obedience on fearing God is being able to follow what he's saying because when God told Moses, it's time to pack up and go, right. Right. he had a choice, either you know, be prideful about the fear that he was feeling or be humble about the fear that God has given you. And I want to tell you something, in this hour that we're in right now, the fear of God is so important because you cannot allow yeah. pride to set in. That's right. The last few days, yeah. Ricky, I, I can't believe you're asking me that, but the last few days we were teaching Mila and Mateo about the fear of God. Amen. Understanding yeah. how to follow that direction because when God speaks to you in these troubled times, we better know what God is saying because if we don't understand that you're going to feel lost, you're going to get lost. And the worst place that all robbers used to say is to be lost is in the middle of God's will. Wow. That's right. Amen. Don't be lost in God's will. Yes. Understand that the fear of God will bring humility, will bring out and birth, guys, the fruit of the Spirit, yes. the meekness and the long-suffering. And I want to yes. tell you something. Right now, Ricky, we are watching the world shaking. There are strange things happening. At the very same time, so many people are losing the fear of God from the pulpit, from the church, and they're using social media to spread gossip, and, and I'm thinking, where is the fear of God in all of this? That's right. Where are we in, in, in the time frame of God's calendar? Because if we don't understand it, I can tell you that the shaking has already begun. It's not coming. It has already started, and yet God is shaking the very foundations of where we are right now, Ricky. But if we don't understand what the Word of God says, That's right. we're going to be in a way, in a, in a place that we're going to be very prideful. That's right. You know, pride, the enemy loves pride. He loves your ego. That's why we must deny ourselves. We must pick up our cross. We must follow Jesus. And that is a process that kills your flesh. That is a process that kills the pride within you, that kills the ego within you. You know, Mato, as you were saying that, the Holy Spirit led me to 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 16. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting. And that word did say rebuking, believer, for correcting, for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every yes. good work. Believer, you have been equipped for every good work. We have to wake up daily, Mondo, and choose, hey, I'm going to put my ego aside. I'm going to put my pride aside. I'm going to put on the full armor of God. I'm going to walk through the wiles of the enemy and know that my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, sustains me because he is faithful. You know, Mondo, the word of God says, even when we are not faithful, he is faithful. Why? Because he can't deny himself. That is who he is. But Mondo, we as the modern day church need to preach that sin is still wrong and that righteousness and holiness is still needed in the body yeah. of Christ. You know, you're absolutely right. And when you go to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6, it says, seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he's near. Let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that they may have mercy on them. Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. Amen. Listen, we have, we have this window of time right now, Ricky, where, where you seek the Lord, you're going to find him. Amen. But you're going to find a merciful God right now. That's right. The time is coming where God will bring his judgment, and the last place you want to be in is in the judgment of God. Listen, don't find yourself, if you're a minister, if you are someone that is traveling, evangelizing, if you have a business, maybe you have you know, the authority to lead your own family, stay near, seek the Lord, yes. seek the re direction. You know, dad used to always say, think before you do yes. something. He yes. still tells me that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I want to tell you something. When you start thinking about the goodness of God and start seeking him, yes. you will find the revelation in, for the hour that we're in because we need interpretation to understand what is happening in Israel, Ricky. What is happening That's in right. our economic system? What is happening with the world events that are going, you know, in chaos? And one 
situation, Ricky, and we have volcanoes going off. Right. At the very same time, we're experiencing earthquakes at the same time. At the very same time that that's happening, we're experiencing flooding like never seen before. You're describing Matthew 24. Exactly. <laughs> so understand that when you think about the goodness of the Lord, find yourself while you can find him. But when the judgments begin, that may be a place that it can be too late. Now, the Bible does say as long as we have breath, that's right. there's hope. That's right. But I want to tell you something. Don't find yourself in the middle of God's judgment Seek him while you can. Find him while you can. Right. Let's get together. And this is why the Voice of the Prophets Network is here to stand with you, yes. seeking the, the counsel of the Lord, seeking Amen. the counsel of the prophets, finding the way to how do we get into God's goodness in the middle of all this chaos before the judgment comes. Amen. That's right. It's important to remember that we as believers are to ensure that our lamps are filled with oil before. Yes. Why? Because whenever the door begins to hear a knock on it, it is too late to start filling your oil or your lamp with oil. You know, Mondo, we have someone on with us today who is truly pivotal for this generation, someone who I know loves holiness, who loves righteousness, who yes. says sin is sin and the word of God still stands true. And I want to thank you, Dr. Candace Smithyman, for being on with us here today. Dr. Candy Smithyman is an international prophetic revivalist and healing minister, and she is currently the host of the Glory Road television show, and her latest book is called 365 Prophetic Revelations from the Hebrew Calendar. We want to thank you for being on with us today, doctor. Hey, Ricky, Maricela, Mondo, what a blessing to be with you today. I'm honored to be on the show. Amen. Doctor, we're going to jump right into it. Israel has been in the news since October 7th, and with Iran's recent historic attack, there is a prophetic significant to all of this. So what is that? Yes, it's exactly what you said from Matthew chapter 24. The end times are here. We are living it out. But the good news is it's not too late to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and it's not too late to step into the special plan that God has for his people. You know, there is a lot of things that the enemy is stirring. Uh, I mean, he's like out there banging his pots and pans, stirring up government agendas, calling for one world government. But we, what we have to say is there is a one world government and it is the kingdom that is arising right now. And it is the sons and daughters of the king. And so I just believe that all that's going on is a revelation to us that the sons and daughters are arising, that the tribe of Judah is going forth. And this actually is the brand new month of Nisan on the religious calendar. And it is the tribe of Yehuda. It's the tribe of Judah that goes first in the brand new month of the Hebrew year. And so God is saying, children, rise up, be who I've called you to be, the one world government where I am the king. So I'm excited to be living during this time, no matter how difficult it is. There is a harvest of souls out there. We're called to be the laborers and people are looking for answers and they're looking to us, the sons and daughters, to say, hey, Jesus has come. He has blessed us. He's given us everything that we need. And we've just got to step into proper position. We've got to believe it ourselves. We've got to stop listening to the media. We've got to stop looking at all of the stirrings that are going on and instead listen to the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and step out and be one of those kingdom citizens. So I think it's a great time to be alive. I'm I'm blessed and favored to live in this year, 5784. God chose all of us for this time because he has a special word for his people. And so let us just stand together and be the kingdom government, Jesus' kingdom government. The doctor's about to get us fired up. Come on, I don't think you like, I don't think you like preaching, do you, doctor? <laughs> no, not at all. Hey, you know Amen. what? Th this uh, book has a forward yes. from uh, Dr. Sid Roth. Yes, we love Sid Roth. Right. I'm going to read a small piece of it. It says, this manual will be a tool that God will use to unite both Jews and Gentiles alike. As we approach the return of Yeshua, it will help. Know the times and the seasons of the Lord. And that's Sid Roth, the host of It's Supernatural. What was it like to get a forward from the great Sid Roth? 
Oh, I love Sid. He's amazing. I have a television show on his network called Your Path to Destiny. I've been on his program multiple times. He is a great mentor and friend. And um, I was truly honored when he said that he would write the forward for the book. I mean, what what a better way um, to be able to share with people all over the world the significance and importance when you have someone like Sid Roth writing the forward. So yes, I, I was blessed. Could you give us an update on the latest news of the attacks of Israel? I know a lot has developed since the first time Iran, um, you know, it had come out that they had sent over 150 projectiles towards Israel, drones and missiles alike, as well as being attacked by Hamas simultaneously. Absolutely. You know, hours after Iran decided to do a historic move into the land of Israel, Israeli president calls Iran's attack a declaration of war. And a few hours after that, Iran sent a message, mass destruction, Iran vows to strike with weapons never used before. This is unbelievable because at the very same time that they're declaring this threat, Iran shuts nuclear facilities and cancels inspections amid fears of Israeli attack. Mm -hmm. Now this is important because this is, a lot of the experts are watching the new type of warfare that the world has to understand the way war is being fought. And this is one of the headlines that came out of that was world braces for Iran and Israel cyber attacks following the missile attacks. Wow. America anti-war activists are cheering over Iran's war. Now, when you listen to this headline, you're thinking that this is happening in the Middle East. But let me read to you the subtitle. At a left-wing conference in Chicago... Mm. Right. Activists believe Iran is part of the arc of resistance because the enemies are Israel and the USA. Here in the United States of America, the city of Chicago, we have people chanting death to America and death to Israel. Mondo, do you ever think we'd get to this point? Never, never. I, I never thought in a million years that pro-Palestine protesters across America can close down airports, motorways, and even the Golden Gate being shut down for five hours or more. We're watching a war within our nation, yet the current administration wants nothing to do with helping Israel. You know, they're promising and promising, but it, behind the scenes, there's a lot of talk, Ricky, about if Israel decides to retaliate, then America will not step in. That's now, right. you want to understand this. We are on the verge of a World War III, regardless if Israel decides to attack, because when you have Russia moving in, you have China moving in, and at the very same time, you have one the of United the United States. I want to give Kingdom. you this because this is so important. Dad has always preached on watch Turkey. In 1999, your friend Jim Baker delivered a prophetic word that in 1999, many, many people decided to, when they heard this word, say, Jim, I think you're crazy. I think you're going off your 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 your, your rocker because none of this is taking place yet. When prophetic word is given, most people are not patient enough to see this word come to pass. Mm -hmm. At that time, when he said, watch Turkey, Tur Turkey was not even in the map, was not even near of any of the conversations. Yet today, Turkey is right in the middle of everything that is happening. This is the latest headline that came out just a few hours ago. Death to Israel in Turkish parliament during the president's speech. Turkish president accuses Israel of attempting to orchestrate repeated coups in Turkey. Says he is the host to Hamas leader Ismail, whom he calls leader of the Palestinian struggle. Now, the struggle here in America, Ricky, is that a lot of churches are going against Israel. It's a lot of churches is, is standing against what Israel is supposed to be standing with. They believe, a lot of churches believe a replacement theology as well, that the modern day church is the Israel in which is being referred to, not the actual body of Christ, you know, the body that is Israel currently there. Um, but we don't believe in a replacement theology. No, Amen. Israel still stands. Israel yes. is still God's Amen. people. Amen. Um, so we have to stand by that. Listen, so. I want you to watch this video, why Israel must respond to Iran's attack, and then we'll come back and discuss it. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu explained to young military recruits why Israel must respond to Iran's attack. Iran stands behind Hamas, behind Hezbollah, behind others. But we're determined to win there and defend ourselves in all arenas. 
Analysts speculate Israel could hit Iranian nuclear facilities or factories and launch sites that made the drone and missile attack possible. Firing 110 ballistic missiles directly to Israel will not get scot free. We will respond in our time, in our place, in the way that we will choose. On Tuesday, the IDF displayed one of the more than 100 ballistic missiles fired at Israel. These uh, ballistic missiles are ones that has 500 kilos of explosives in the warhead. We are talking about over 110 ballistic missiles coming from Iran aiming towards Israel. These are 60 tons of explosives directly to Israel. On the diplomatic front, the U.S. continues to pressure Israel against a retaliatory strike and has announced it's ready to apply economic sanctions against Iran's missile and drone program. Critics point out that the Biden administration has waived such sanctions in the past. We lifted or waived the sanctions that we had, this administration, on the drones and, and the missiles and on the energy. This is giving them $100 billion in cash to fund their terror operations. And that's why we're seeing this. Senior policy advisor for the U.S.-Israel Education Association, Ari Sakhar, says most citizens want to send Iran a message. Israelis, I believe, think that we need to return fire. Iran cannot be let off with a tongue lashing for, for what they did. There must be a price for impinging upon the security of a sovereign nation. Sakhar believes, like many here in Israel, that divine intervention was at work during the attack. I have an axiomatic belief in the existence of a God, a God who pays attention and who cares, especially about what goes on in Israel. And everything I see reinforces that belief. So when I see 99% um, of, um, of rockets that are fired at Israel, of uh, threats, missiles, cruise missiles that are fired at Israel being shot down, um, I wake up the next morning and I thank God for it. This is important because the, the, the competition is who will use nuclear weapons first. We pray nobody does, but man, that is a scary thought, isn't it, Mondo? Absolutely. Dr. Candace, how critical is it for us to understand the importance Israel holds in God's plan for humanity? Yes, Israel is so very, very important. I mean, Israel is the apple of God's eye, you know, and we, as the people of God, need to be standing behind Israel. We need to be praying for Israel, fasting, interceding, uh, seeking God um, to send angelic help and assistance to Israel and all those uh, that are there and that are fighting. So we stand with Israel, and we do that because those who pray for the peace of Jerusalem are blessed. And so our job job is to do that very thing. God loves Israel. And where he, where, what he loves, we love. Amen. Exactly. What he loves, we love. You couldn't have put it better. And Mondo, you know, we've been saying this for a long time here on the Jim Baker Family Show and on the PTL Television Network, but if it lines up with the Word of God, then we will cling our very lives to it. Yes. And if it does not line up with the Word of God, then friend, we must reject it. We must align ourselves perfectly with the Word of God. Why? Because this is truly our moral compass. Mondo, you can't point true north if your compass is off. Right. And if you're not pointing at the Word of God, your compass is off, your moral compass is. You know, we're watching the direction of this nation steer away from the truth and, uh, and of pretty much the Word of God. That's right. Again, we talked about the fear of God. This nation is slowly moving away from the fear of God to the values that the gospel stands for, yet is being redone, is being re-evaluated. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you something. When a nation moves away from God's values, you're pretty much, you know, saying, God, I don't want you anymore. We're watching the judgments of God in a different way than what we expected. Yet we as the church must understand that there are some non-negotiables with God. One of them happens to be Israel. That's right. Doctor, why isn't an absolute non-negotiable for Christians to stand up and help Israel today? Well, you know, Israel is a part of all of our plan, Jew or Gentile, for 
uh, the end times and the fulfillment of Ye Yeshua HaMashiach coming and returning the New Jerusalem. And so it's necessary for us to join forces uh, with Israel, uh, brothers and sisters coming together and standing because God has a great uh, end time plan uh, for his return and for uh, the New Jerusalem. And so it's very important to all of us that we protect the land that God has set aside. Our entire word from Genesis to Revelation revolves around the understanding of the Jewish people, their exodus from Egypt, how they went through the desert, um, coming up even upon uh, the fall feast, which is uh, the tabernacles, which is not only fulfilled, but will also be fulfilled uh, when uh, Messiah returns. And so there's so much that we need to keep our eyes on. There's a lot of news that's taking place. I've been listening um, to the Christian news primarily, and, and it's, it's very right on in its stirring of helping to encourage people to come into alignment with who God is and what his plan is for Israel. And so I'm hoping that people will listen. Um, they'll listen to God's word. They'll listen to their heart. If you just listen to your heart and you know God's heart for you, then you can know and understand his heart love for Israel. And, and coming on board with that is pleasing to the Lord. And we want to please him. We do want to please the Lord. Doctor, can you share why the importance of the Hebrew calendar is critical in order to understand the revelation in the news and discern prophecy correctly. Yes, it's very, very important. See, we uh, were all born into the Gregorian calendar, which was established back in AD 425. The Council of Nicaea and the Emperor Constantine decided that they would switch us entirely to a Gregorian calendar. And with that means that we're living in the year 2024, but that the Gregorian calendar is not God's calendar. His calendar is the Hebrew calendar, which starts at the day of creation, which is why we're in the year 5,784. And so God's calendar is different. It is a lunar calendar. Our Gregorian calendar is a lunar solar calendar, but it revolves uh, primarily around uh, solar dates and has a 365-day uh, year, whereas lunar calendars have 360-day years. So, uh, uh, God put on my heart after studying for almost two decades the Hebrew calendar to put together a resource that helps merge the two of them. We have to, um, as Christians, know and understand that God's times and seasons are different than what was set in the Council of Nicaea back in AD 425. A lot of the blessings that God has for his people are missing for Christians because we don't know the right times and seasons. Now, it's not our fault. We don't have to condemn one another. This happened long before we were ever born. But the fact of the matter is, it's time now, and it has been, great revelation's been coming forth for many years, that we as Christians need to come on board with the Hebrew calendar, uh, knowing and recognizing the feasts, the right times and seasons, uh, what happens um, each and every month uh, in a 12-month period of time. And when you can follow through on that and understanding the Hebrew calendar, you'll be able to prophesy even more correctly in, into the earth than what we have been doing. And so I show and I reveal that in, in, in my book, but I think it's important for us to realize we're off. And this year happens to be a leap year. Not only was it a leap year on the Gregorian calendar, but it was a leap year on the Hebrew calendar, which means we have uh, our dates all messed up. As many know, you celebrated at your Christian church on March 31st, Easter Sunday, right? Or Resurrection Sunday, we like to call it. But it's actually not the resurrection because Passover didn't even happen. We're getting ready to come up on Passover, and that happens on April 22nd through April 30th of this year. And so we have to understand our calendars are not right. So then the same thing's going to happen at Pentecost. We're going to gather together on May 19th, according to the Gregorian calendar, and it's not really Pentecost. Pentecost doesn't happen until June 11th through the 13th this year. And it's actually called the Feast of Shavuot, according to the Hebrew calendar, according to the feast. And, and now the fall 
festivals are on target, but the others aren't. And so, so I mean, how does that make us feel as Christians to know that we came in and we celebrated Resurrection Sunday, but we weren't even putting emphasis on Passover because it's not even here yet. So that's what we're doing today here um, on April 18th as this program's going forth. We're talking about what's getting ready to happen next week, which is vitally important to God's heart, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Passover. Yeshua Messiah is the Passover lamb. And so God calls us to come into a place of feasting with him, celebrating. It's a Moedim. It's his appointed time and season, and he wants us to come before him that week. I mean, he appreciates, hallelujah, Christians, I'm glad you came and celebrated Resurrection Sunday, but celebrate my Moedim, which is Passover, and remember the resurrection that week as well. Amen. Doctor, you wrote wow. this amazing book. It's called 300 and 65 prophetic revelations from the Hebrew calendar. This is a critical book. This is available with Destiny Image. Yes, that's right, Ricky. If you go to our website, and better yet, because as you're watching right now, on the lower part of your screen, there's a QR code there. If you just scan that, it will take you directly to Destiny Image, who we've partnered with. They are the publisher of this book. They will get the book out to you as well. And if I can, Candace, I feel to go along and continue what you're saying, you say something on the back of the book, and if you can speak a little bit more into it, you say, is it possible modern believers are missing out on the fullness of heaven by neglecting God's prophetic calendar? And then you go on to say, is there something the saints of old knew that we don't? Can you go into that a little bit deeper? Yes, the saints of old actually before we had the whole Council of Nicaea and the change that happened to the Gregorian calendar, the disciples of Jesus and even Jesus himself practiced the feasts of the Lord. Um, Jesus says, go and prepare the Passover. Um, we know that, that he went back during tabernacles. We know that the disciples were present during those feasts. And so where did they go for Christians? I mean, where, where this, this was written off by Emperor Constantine. And let me tell you why. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, and I want to read that to you all. This was a move by Satan. Emperor Constantine was a civil and he was a religious leader. It says that history says later in life, he did receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. However, he had an agenda. He was an anti-Semitic. He wanted to separate Christians, Gentile Christians from the Jews. He set up different dates. For instance, Christmas Day is December 25th. It's actually a solar holiday. That's not when Jesus was born. He called Resurrection Sunday Easter after Ishtar. Um, all of these specific things happened because he knew as a religious and a civil leader, because remember, emperor covers both sides. He knew that if the Christians knew the times and seasons to come to the Lord for the Moedim, they would gain power because coming to God during his feast and bringing him an offering and a blessing during that time creates a power force with those that are blessing the Lord during the times that God is asking for it. So when Constantine and the council wrote all the new dates according to the solar calendar. He, they removed the power from the Christians. We became ignorant and we did not know the right times and seasons. Now the Jews continued on with their feasts doing what they should be doing, but the Christians got lost and that's where we are today. Now Daniel 7.25 says, and this is referring to Satan, he shall speak great words against the Most High and wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So all those years ago, more than 2000 years ago, when those changes were made, the enemy switched the power source. We lost some of our power because we don't know when God is saying, it's time for my party. It's my Moedim. Come and feast unto me and bring me an offering during that time. Deuteronomy 16 verses 16 and 17 says three times a year we're to come before the Lord and bless him. That's the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is Passover, the Feast of Weeks, which is Shavuot or Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And we don't even know this. Christians don't even know that there are specific times to sow unto the Lord and to come and share. Shabbat with him 
for an entire week. We have lost our ability to tap into the richness of the heritage that we've been given in our Judeo-Christian roots because it was written off by a government. It is time for us to gather together now and return back to what has been stolen so we can regain our power. Come on, who wants to have some power? It's time for the kingdom to arise. It's time to stop listening to a civil law that was written all the years ago that, that shows this year is irrelevant. How can you have Resurrection Sunday before you even celebrate the Passover? That's not possible. And God is doing this all over the planet. He is merging now and understanding and now more than ever, Christians are coming to God when he says and blessing him with an offering. The power is being returned. Hallelujah. God. Doctor, we're Amen. gonna let you keep going. We would like wow. you to teach about the Passover offering and the importance of sowing during uh, sowing the right, uh, you know, excuse me, sowing during this season uh, for God's blessing. Yes, and as a matter of fact, we're coming up on Passover, April twenty second through the 30th. And during that time, God, in accordance with his word, and I read it in Deuteronomy 16, verses 16 and 17, says three times a year you come before me. So we know we, we should come during Passover. So that means next week or any time starting now. I mean, sow your seed now. It's not, it's not too early, but we sow an offering. This is not your tithe. This is not your weekly giving to your local assembly, but choose a ministry that pours into your your life. Choose the Jim Baker show. Bless the Jim Baker show and the work that, that this family is doing for humanity by revealing the times and seasons. And so in, bring that offering to the Lord. Now the word says that every male shall appear before the Lord and bring an offering in accordance with the proportion in which they have received. So this means that three times a year, we're to evaluate and we're to bless God in proportion to that which we've received. Now, an offering is in addition to the tithe. So these are three separate times a year that we should be setting aside offerings and coming to meet the Lord and going to bless a ministry. There's a fourth time also, and many Christians do this already, and this is on our Gregorian calendar. We'll gather together for what we call first fruits. And this seems to be a very global thing in the Gentile Christian churches. It's not a Jewish thing. Okay, now first fruits is, but here's the thing the feast of first fruits is Resurrection Sunday, according to the Hebrew calendar. So, in my book, I share all about first fruit giving. The bottom line with first fruits is any time that you receive a first of something, you're to bless the Lord with the very top of that first thing. Why do we do that? We give God the best of the first, and that positions us in faith to then be a receiver from God directly the blessings that we're supposed to receive. See, people don't often give God first off the top. They wait to evaluate what do they have left over. But that's not faith. That's saying, this is all I have, take this. If you give from the first, then what you're gonna see is there is going to be a covering from God to take care of all of the extra that we need. So January first fruits, it's noble, but we really categorize it from a Hebrew perspective. It should be the feast of first fruits which is Resurrection Sunday. But it's delightful that we set upon in our Gregorian calendar year to come, since it is our Gregorian calendar year, to fast before the Lord, to consecrate ourselves because it is the beginning of our Gregorian year. God honors that. He honors all of this. However, he wants to see his people get in alignment with the Jewish people. See, there's, there's scripture that says that the Jews in the end times will become jealous for what the Gentiles have right? One of the things that we have is that we, when we practice the feast and we know Yeshua as our Lord and Savior, that is something that causes Jewish people to say, well, why are they practicing our feasts? It makes them question, why, why do they come to the Lord during our feast? Why do they bless him during our feast? It makes them ask this question. And then we tell them, because we're coming to God and honoring him just like you do, but we believe 
that Yeshua Messiah has fulfilled the feasts. He's, he's representative of all the feasts and that he is Messiah to us. So when we come and celebrate, we're celebrating him. He's our Passover lamb. I mean, he is the fullness of the word that was received on Mount Sinai during Feast of Shavuot or according to the Acts chapter two in the New Testament, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He is uh, the God of creation at Rosh Hashanah. He is Yom Kippur that he went up and he put his blood on the mercy seat. He, he atoned for our sins. He is tabernacles, our joy in every way and the remembrance of the feast to come that we will all celebrate together with him when we drink of the fruit of the vine. So this is so special. And if Christians can grab a hold of this, we are going to retrieve back the lost years that came from those decisions that we had nothing to do with. Doctor, we'll, wow. we'll bring you to come wow. uh, preach our church. Come on, we no, need that. Is, oh, that's is, a critical message for this time. This is so special. This is, I don't know about you, but there's a sensitive spirit as she was speaking. Amen. Thank a you, spirit Jesus. of honoring the first fruits. That's right. Understanding that the, 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 there was a shift in the spirit, at least for me. I felt it. I know you're watching right now. I hope there was a shift in your living room, where you're, wherever you're watching right now. Because this is a moment that we give God our best, yeah. not right. only financially, but we give our attention to him. That's right. Listen, yeah. there's a lot of you that are arguing about so many different things. Put the arguments away, what other people are doing. The key is, what is it that you're doing at home? Where are you going to put your first fruits? What ministry are you ready to bless today? Mm -hmm. If you have been watching this program for a long time, you have, you've been supporting Pastor Jim and Lori Baker or parents, this ministry, the vision and the mission that God has set for us to do to continue to go forward. We have to understand that we come in in celebration and reverence and fear of God as we bring our first fruits to bless the generations to come, to bless our current family, to bless the church, to bless the word of God. We want you to stand with our ministry in this very hour that we're in right now because there's a shift happening. There's a moment in time that God sets Passover to Pentecost and give us that time in between to say, God, here's what we want you to do. We want to say thank you and worship you first as we give the very best of what we have before we enter into Passover, God, because we want the blessing. And we don't sow to get a blessing. We sow because we're obedient. That's right. And many of you have been sowing, trying to get something out from God, yet it's the opposite. When you give without expecting to receive anything in return, I don't know about you, but something blesses you when you give without expecting to receive anything, yet God's promises Amen. is to bless yes. you beyond your yes. comprehension you, and bless you to understand that if you seek the right way, if you seek me in the right moment, there's a moment in time before anything begins to happen where Passover stands at the moment in time to help us understand that it's not a ritual that we're going after. It's an obedience moment. Yeah. It's an obedient moment and say, God, we've done everything we can to do to get us to this point. More than that, God, we don't know what else to do. But God, we are sacrificing our lives to serve you every single day. Ahead, but the gift that we give to you today is a gift to remind us and to remind you that we love you and we are thankful yes, for thank you, God. You. We give in a moment of thankfulness, of thanksgiving. Listen to this. As you stand with our ministry in the moment that we're in right now, is a period of, of time that we have to understand that the vision has to go forward. Yes. The multiplication that will begin to be birthed in this moment. I'm praying that as I'm going to sow my seed, I'm expecting a miracle of multiplication for this ministry to Amen. be expanded to where we were and far more than that. That's right. I want you to pray about sowing a seed right now. A seed of thanksgiving to this ministry. Amen. And saying, we have heard the message. We have watched the message. We have listened to the message. And now we want to be obedient in thanksgiving and sowing a seed in this moment in time, yeah. Ricky. Amen. That's right. We want you to stand with our ministry yeah. and sow a Passover seed right now. And stand with PTL, the Voice of the Prophets Network, Marcel. Mm -hmm. It's so critical. That's right. And Ricky, you know, Mondo, Ricky, as you guys are talking, and Dr. Candice. 
you know, I'm encouraged. And as I listen, I feel the Holy Spirit just speaking right now directly to my spirit. You know, I'm a mother of two young children. And sometimes I thank God for that season that I'm in right now. I have a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. And even just a few days ago, the opportunities that you get to see giving from a child's lens, there's nothing like it. The Lord says to come to me like a child. It's the pureness of a child. And I know that just this week, I am always teaching my kids, but we had someone who they provided an offering. And I told my children, I said, There's, they're asking for an offering. What does that mean? And I take those opportunities to instill in them the principles, because that's what it comes back to. This is what Candace has written about in her book. These are not things that we just look to. These are truly the principles of the kingdom of God, the principles of the fullness that God has in store for us. But as I sit here and I listen, you know, many of you may be hearing this for the very first time. Many of you, you may be seasoned and you may understand and you've been preparing your heart for this moment. But as I sit here, I will break it down as I did with a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. I told my children, I said, the thing about God is that we can never outgive God. No matter what it is that we give, there's no amount of finances, there's no amount of love, there's no amount of our obedience that we could ever outgive God. And I always think to what our pastor Joe here, he always teaches us, and it's something that I hold dearly to my heart. He says, and he says this every Sunday, the Lord will give, will give seed to the sower. That's right, if you're true. sitting out there and you're saying, I want to sow, I want to give. And if that's your heart, because it comes from the motives of the heart, that's what it's about. It's so God, the purity and the motives of giving your very best to the Lord, giving that offering, not as Mondo and everyone here says, not to receive anything. Not to say, Lord, I am doing this in place of this. No, it's the motives of saying, God, I know that I can never outgive you, and I will gladly give. I want it to be joyful. I want it to be a time where I can sow that seed and watch God do what he wants to do in your life and the life of others. But I want to encourage you, if you're someone who's sitting out there right now and you're watching, and maybe this is the first time you're ever hearing about this, I would encourage you, as our pastor says, is if you are a sower, if you're someone who you want to give, you want to sow into what God, the kingdom of God and what God's doing, then pray. That's what we do is we go to God and we ask the Lord, Lord, what is the offering that you would have for this time, Lord? Because it's not about me. When you take yourself out of that equation, you realize that there's something so much greater that is happening in the spirit realm. Amen. But one thing that I know is any time that I'm given an opportunity to have knowledge, Dr. Candice, just like you've done today, I've sat here and I'm like, Lord, thank you. Here's another opportunity. You just brought knowledge before me, God. And any time that knowledge is presented according to the word of God, according to God's principles, then every believer should be leaping and jumping and saying, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of what God is doing, not what the world's doing right now. What is God doing? And so I want to encourage you, if you feel led, and but pray first, truly pray. Right. Seek ask the, the Lord, Spirit. ask the Holy Spirit, because he will lead and guide you. He will show you. And whether it be this ministry, whether it be a ministry that has impacted your life, whether it be something that you know you want to be a part of, but if this ministry has touched you, if Pastor Jim and Lori Baker If the vision that they have set forth for this ministry has impacted your life, we want you to be a part of that offering giving That's with right. us. I want you to call. As you see on the screen right now, you can call. We have our call center here. That's restoration. God brought it here. He brought it back to Morningside. But you can call our toll-free number. That's 1-888-988-1588. And that all that I can say and leave you with is, remember, as I tell my children, You can never outgive God. That's right. You know, I listened to a pastor one time. He said, uh, you can never outgive God. The problem is most of you don't even try. Wow. And, you know, I, I really actually took that to my heart. And I realized, hey, I'm, I'm not even trying. Because, you know, there was a point in my life where I gave my tithe um, because I was told that it was a fundamental of a believer. I did not give my tithe because I wanted to rejoice in giving it to him. Then my heart shifted, Mondo. Then I realized, you know what? What if I gave this with a grateful heart? What if I gave this cheerfully? What if I gave yes. this never expecting anything back That's in right. return? Thank and Mondo, you, that is when my life yes, changed. Lord. You know, I was doing a fast earlier this year. It was 14 days. I'm laying on my couch. My family's asleep. I'm laying on my couch and I'm saying, God, 
It's almost done with this fast. I'm 12 days into this. I need you to speak to me. I need you to say something to me. It's been 12 days. I've been yearning after you. I've been trying to listen to your voice. You have a word for me. And I heard the audible voice of the Holy Spirit, which has only been a few times in my life. And the Holy Spirit told me, give your way to freedom. And I said, well, Holy Spirit, please elaborate. I'm a simple man. Elaborate on that for me. Will you tell me more? Is that give financially to freedom? Is that give uh, emotionally to freedom, spiritually? What am I supposed to be giving? And the Holy Spirit said, give it all. Mm. And I said, okay, I understand the message. But Mondo, I believe that's a message for the church. We need to be giving, not just financially. I want to clarify that. We need to be giving our way to freedom. Because believer, you might be going through something right now. You might be going through a trial or a tribulation. But what can you give? You can give hope to somebody else to say, hey, you know what? I'm in a position of pain right now, but I know God is still good and he only does good. I'm in a position of hurt right now, but I know the Lord's faithfulness will last until the end of my life. You can give out hope. And in return, Mondo, I believe you will edify your spirit. Your spirit, man, will become stronger and gain strength. And you will be able to walk out according to the scriptures. Friend, we're not called to be down trot. We're not called to be depressed and anxious. We're not called to be in poor health. Now, believer, we can do some physical things that inflict those things upon us because we're human beings. But believer, if we align ourselves with the word of God, friend, I'm talking to you who's listening. If you align yourself with the word of God, it is so difficult not to walk in the fullness of Christ. What happens is there's a window of miracles that begin to take place that are unexpected. Things that probably you were not praying for, and God decides to bless you with a miracle from out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, you know, Maricela, we wake up every morning, and it's a miracle that we're on every single day with you. It's a miracle that this ministry is on week after week. If you only knew the miracle that it takes for us to be on the air with you every single day, you would be shocked. But I want to tell you something. When God's plans align with the obedience that you have to offer him, God begins to bless you. The Bible says, let your heart not be anxious of anything. Amen. Rest in the peace of the Lord. And as you give, you're going to experience a peace of God in your life where you're not going to be anxious. You're not going to find yourself being depressed. Not because you're giving. No, it's not even about the giving. It's about the action and the motive that you decide to take the first step and decide to make your yes be yes and your no be no. That's right. I want to tell you something. When you have the best for God, you want to dress up. You want to do your hair. You, you, you want to smell good because you, 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 it's, it's called the fear of God, the reverence. Amen. We have lost it in the church. We lost our morals in the church. We lost our values in the church. We, lo- we become a professional, critical, you know, people. We criticize everything. Well, you're not doing this. You're not doing this. Get that spirit off of you. Stop damning everything. Get in alignment with God because God wants to use you. God wants to use us. God wants this time between Passover and Pentecost to be something so fun that the foundation has to be so sacred. And this man drove Maricela all the way to Morningside. And what happened? That's right. 15 hours. That's right. What happened, You know, a 15-hour drive this man drove, and we met him in the lobby, and he... Uh, said, hey, I have something for the ministry. And, you know, we're, okay, w- what is it, brother? And he said, hey, I don't want my name said. I don't want it. The Holy Spirit woke me up and told me, I need to drive to Morningside and hand you this. And, Mondo, it was a check for $160,000. Wow. Now, Mondo, what, I don't think what people, what people realize is we were in a critical state yeah. in this ministry. And that yeah. man doesn't realize that is exactly what we yeah. needed in that moment. Wow. And that man delivered I it. Just to say this because when you say we're in a critical state that means that this is saturday friday every friday we come together and we say god what were the offerings what came in that's right to help support this ministry and we're in the middle of an expo event we're in the middle there's so much exciting things happening here and we realize god we have guests that we have to take care of we want to bless their ministries we got to do honorariums the funds were down that week. It was That's just right. everything that could come against us. It had Dead. piled and piled and piled. And our accountant said, well, if we're lucky, this is how we left Friday. She says, it, just pray. Because if it all comes together, just maybe by everything coming together, we may be able to just take care of our staff, pay our staff. The payroll. Maybe, just the payroll. Just pray. Because if we can't, then we just won't be able to. And we'll just see what happens on Monday morning when we come in. 
But you know what? We took that message and we said, God, we've been here before and we've watched you show up, Lord God. We didn't stop. We, did, we, we heard the message and we went right back out to and preaching. we went to preaching, to teaching, to, to right. preparing people with their seminars, to spreading love, hugging one another, enjoying each other's company with the body of Christ coming together. And we, do, we did what we always do. We said, God, we trust you, Lord. That's right. Because either we trust him with it all or we trust him with nothing. That's the options you have. You either trust him all the way or nothing at all. There's That's no right. in between. And so we continued. We said, wow, well, God, we've seen you. You're going to make a way. We don't know how, Lord, but we do know without a shadow, by, uh, a shadow of faith, with, by our faith, you will make a way. That's right. So when Ricky Armando are telling you that we have this gentleman who drives here 15 hours. And he didn't stay. I asked if he wanted to eat lunch with me. And he said, nope, I'm going home. Yeah. And it was he, everything he, he that He said, we I came needed. here on a mission. I completed my mission. It's time for me yes. to go home. Woo. And Marcel, I don't know if you remember this, but it just occurred to me. Wow. Uh, we had had that conversation on yes. Friday. It was Saturday. We were talking to each other. And you said, hey, you know, let's get together before our next uh, seminar. Uh, let's talk about some fundraising ideas. Yes. And I said, hey, okay, that's good. Just give me a minute. I need to go into the back and do something. Yes. It was when I left, and then you, you called me, and you said, hey, Ricky, there's a gentleman out in the uh, the main building who wants to talk to you. And yes. I said, okay, I'll go out and talk to him. But it wow. was funny the way that it is because we had in our minds a set way, okay, let's get together, let's pray, let's figure right. out some fundraising ideas. And God says, hey, I already have it all figured that's out. That's right. And believer, Amen. it's the same for you. Sometimes in life we are striving to try to have it all figured out. Yes. We're saying, you know what? I'm going to come out with a plan. It's going to be a good plan. I'm going to cross all of my T's. I'm going to dot all of my I's, and everything's going to work. Why? Because I have yes. created and, and crafted up this plan. And God's saying, friend, from the beginning of time, before you were a thought in your mother's mind, I already knew the situation. I already knew the yes. answer, and I already had the way prepared for you. All you have to do, believer, is yeah. have faith and hold on. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Candace, we have a minute left in our broadcast. Would you pray for the agreement on a Passover seed that our partners are giving even to us and to your ministry? Lord, we just thank you so much, Father, for the obedience of your people. We thank you, Lord, that you're pressing upon those even right now, Lord, how to bless you during your Moedim, during your Feast of Unleavened Bread, Passover, Father. We thank you, Lord, in accordance with Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 and 17, Exodus chapter 12, there's multiple scriptures, Father, that, that teach us about it. this is the time to give. And I thank you, Father, that you are tweaking people's hearts right now, Lord, and that you are pouring out the blessings. Just as Jesus, during the Last Supper, spoke to his disciples and said, drink all of this cup because this cup is the blood of the New Testament, which was shed for you for the remission of sins, Lord. And that word shed means poured out. You are pouring out your blessings upon us, Lord. You are pouring out your blood upon us, Father. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've given. We thank you and we receive and we return unto you, Lord, during your feast, the blessings that you have given us, Father, because they are immeasurable, they are abundant, and you are the God of, of abundancy, the God of the promised land. And we return to you in celebration during the feast of Passover. We thank you that the seed will go far and go fast and accomplish all the purposes for which you have designed it in the earth, Father. And we thank you that we have the opportunity to bless you in this time and hour in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. 365 prophetic revelations from the Hebrew calendar. This is a book you are not going to want to miss. You can go to Destiny Image on our affiliate program at jimbakershow.com. And friend, I want you to partner with us today. That number is 1-888-988-1588. And just as Mondo was speaking, I believe that there are heartstrings being tugged by the Holy Spirit. But what we want you to do, like Marcella said, is the most important thing. Believer, pray first. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit, what is it in which you would have me do? And whatever it is the Holy Spirit says to do, I found that it's easiest just to do it. Even if it seems like it's a stretch, the Holy Spirit, like the Bible says, gives seed to the sower. Friend, we want to thank you for being on with us today. Doctor, you have been a blessing. And we want to thank you for watching The Jim Baker Show. I want you to remember this as you go about your day, that God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Our mission is to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every person. 
We want to thank you for standing with us and your support. To see more content like this, go to watchjimbakershow.com. Remember, like my dad always says, God loves you. He really does.